welcome to another video series by Geek Together. Today we'll be learning how to install the OpenVPN Access Server Virtual Appliance. Using the OpenVPN Access Server Virtual Appliance, we can access our internal network resources externally using a secure tunnel. The OpenVPN Access Server Appliance is free and so we're going to learn how to install that today so we are able to access our home network from anywhere. The first thing you want to do is click on the link I have in the description section below. Once you click on that link, you're going to be presented with a page like I have here. You want to head over to the login section and you're going to select the access server option. So if you have not already had an access server or OpenVPN account, it is going to show you with a screen for you to sign up. Or login you're gonna select the option to sign up and you create an account and once you create your account you're gonna log in and you should have a page like this once you get to this page you want to head over to get the access server and you can see here that there's three ways we can use to get the access server the most easiest way if you have your own virtualized environment like VMware which we're gonna to use today is to use the third option if you want to install it manually you can use the as a software package option but as this video we're going to use the virtual appliance option and we're going to install that on esxi vmware as you can see you can also do this for microsoft hyper-v so if you have a hyper-v virtualized environment you can still download the image and follow through with this video the third option for those of you who are using a cloud provider is to follow the instructions for your cloud provider if it is included in here so once again for this video we are using the vmware exxi so you're going to go ahead and download that option so once you select the option you're going to download the ova file and once that's complete you want to head over to your vmware exxi system once you have your vmware exxi open you want to select the create or register a new vm option and then you want to go to deploy a virtual machine from an OVA or OVA file. You're going to give it a name. And we're going to select the file we just downloaded. So once that's done, you're going to go next. You select the data store or storage in which you want to store your OVA image for OpenVPN. And you're going to go next. And now you're going to select the network bridge that you want to use for your network. So in my case, I'm selecting this network and then uh, let the power on automatically option remain. And then you're going to go next and you select finish. So once you select finish, you're going to wait for that image to be imported. So I will post the video here and I will come back once the importation is complete. So once the importation of your open VPN access server virtual machine is complete, the next thing you're going to do is get the IP address of the OpenVPN access server and then we're going to SSH into it. If you don't want to SSH into it for now, you can just open the web interface and then you're going to log in and follow along with the rest of the video. So I'm going to head over to the command line. If you log in here, you're going to notice you're going to be presented with a page that looks like this. For the first time so this page is basically wanting you to accept the open vpn access server license agreement and so we're just going to go ahead and press yes you can read the agreement if you want but after you're done you're going to select the yes and then we're going to get another question that says is this going to be our primary access server node we're just going to select the yes option because you're using this at home and you don't really need multiple access servers if you wanted to use the option to get multiple access servers to have like a high availability environment you're gonna have to pay for that but in our case we're just gonna select yes for um having just one access server node and then it's gonna want us to specify a network interface and an ip address we're gonna leave this all as default unless you wanted to manually change your ip address but in my case i'm just gonna leave this as default because i use dhcp and i'm happy with the ip address that was assigned so I'm going to select enter. The next option we have here, we are asked which kind of encryption algorithms do we want to use for our OpenVPN um, certificate authority. 
So you have three options here. You have the RSA and then you have the SECP um, and then you have show all. Um, so in this our example, the recommended option for us to use to install is the set p 384 r one so we're just going to leave that as default and you're going to press enter and the next option we have here is they want us to specify the port number for our admin web ui by default it is 943 we're just going to leave this as default for now we'll change it as we get complete with the installation when we first access the admin console i'm going to show you guys how to make all these changes so for now we're just going to leave everything as default um the tcp port number for the open vpn daemon is 443 so we're just going to leave that as default so the next option we are presented with is should the client traffic be routed by default through the vpn we're just going to select yes for now in the subsequent videos we'll talk more about this so we're just going to go yes we can change this later should the client dns traffic be routed by default through the vpn yes as well so the next option is if we want to use open vpn as our admin user so we're gonna select no because we want to specify our own admin username in this case i'm going to give our admin user the name of gig together you can call it whatever you want. So once that's complete, it's going to ask us for the password for our admin user. If you skip through this part, it is going to automatically generate a password for you to use. But I'm going to enter a password that I can remember. Make sure you're using a very strong password because this is going to be the password of the admin user. So once that's done, it is going to ask us to specify our activation key we don't need any activation key because we're going to use the free version. So we're just going to skip through that. And once that's done, the open VPN access server installation script is going to go ahead and complete the installation for our open VPN access server. So now that the installation is complete, you can see that we are being told to go to our web browser and access our admin UI using this link. So I'm going to copy this, open up the browser. And I'm going to paste that in there. So once I do that, we are presented with our open VPN access server login screen. So if we try to log in as our admin user, we are presented with another license agreement screen that we need to agree to. So once you agree to the license agreement, you are presented with the welcome screen or with the admin homepage which means you have successfully installed your open vpn access server so now that we've made sure that our installation is complete and we can access our open vpn access server admin web page the next thing we're going to do is head back over to the command line and we're going to make some other final configurations the first one we're going to do here is make sure we set the correct time zone for our open vpn access server because this is important. So in order for you to set the correct time zone, you're going to run the command dpkg-reconfigure-tz data. So once you run that command, it is going to ask you for which geographical area you live in, which means your country. So I'm going to select US and then you're going to have to find the time zone in which you are in. So in my case, I'm in Eastern time zone and that's complete. The next thing we're going to do is set up a static IP address for our OpenVPN access server. OpenVPN recommends that you set up a static IP address for your OpenVPN access server. So for us to do this, we're going to head over to the Etsy-Netplan directory. And once you open that directory, you should see something similar like I have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename this first file. So we're going to copy that and we're going to name it 01-netconfig or cfg.yaml. So once you do that, now we're going to use nano to open up that file and then we're going to make some changes to that file. So once you have that file open, if you see on here as of right now, the file is set up to use the DHCP server. So we're going to change this. And I'll paste my new configuration in here. So if you follow through with this file, 
all we're saying is we're going to set a default or static IP address to 10.100.10.159. So that's going to be our IP address for our open VPN server. And for the routes, we want to use our gateway, which is 10.100.10.254. So this is going to be the IP address of your router or your gateway. And then below here, you want to enter the DNS server. You can do one DNS server, you can do multiple DNS servers. Just note that when you're adding more DNS servers, you're using a comma, space, and the new IP address. So once that's done, we're going to save that file. And then we're going to run the command sudo netplan apply. So as you can see, when we run that, I have an error in here for the network definition. So if you did the same mistake, you're just going to go back and you're going to add a 24 after your OpenVPN server IP address. So once you have that, we'll save that and we'll run the netplan apply again. And that should complete now just fine. If you didn't get any errors, you have successfully set a static IP address for your OpenVPN server. So once we have that done, we're going to reboot our OpenVPN access server and make sure that we can still access the server using our command line and our web browser. So once that's done, if you go back to the browser and enter the static IP address that you gave to your OpenVPN access server, you can see that we are still able to access our OpenVPN access server. So the next thing we're going to do is head back over to the command line. So we're going to go ahead and change the root user's password. So the root user is the user that we use to log in to the OpenVPN access server on the command line. To change the password, you're just going to type the command PASSWD and then you're going to give it a new password and you re-enter the password. And once that's done, you have successfully changed the password of your OpenVPN access server root user. The next thing we're going to do is update our OpenVPN access server appliance or check to see if we have any updates. So you're going to run the command sudo apt update. Followed by the sudo apt upgrade command. And then we're going to check to make sure that our OpenVPN access server doesn't need any upgrades. So to upgrade your OpenVPN access server, you're going to run the next command apt upgrade openvpn as. And as of right now, we are running the latest version of the OpenVPN access server. This brings us to the end of the part one of this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and please do not forget to subscribe to the channel.